Hey everyone, welcome back to Mortal Kombat 11. In this tutorial video, I'm going to be going over and showing you how I use practice mode and how I begin to learn a brand new character. That was my phone, by the way. Uh, yeah, hopefully this is going to give you some tips on what to look for and kind of how to figure out a character that you have never picked up before. Now, I'm going to take the opportunity here because I just unlocked Frost through the story mode. And yeah, we'll go in and hopefully you can pick up a couple of things. One of the things, the reason I'm out here in this menu, I wanted to show you. One of the things even I had trouble with is how to set up competitive variations for practice mode. If you don't know, if you go into practice mode and you pick a random character, for example, Cabal, these two variations and their moves are not the same as what you would have available if you went into a game of ranked or competitive uh, casual matches. A really weird choice because I feel like it can create a lot of confusion uh, that someone will spend like an hour practicing with Cabal going to ranked and then their moves will be different. So I don't know honestly why NRS set it up this way but it is the way it was set up so what can you do about it? Well you go into customize and we pick Frost. I've already done this before because I had to re-record the first half of this episode. You go into the variation, to the abilities section, and then if you press square, you can select the presets. And these two presets with the little trophies next to it are the two competitive variations. So we can do it for this, exit out, and it's already done for the other one. That's how you do it. It's really weird, it's not explained anywhere, it's kind of a hidden feature, but that's how you do it. I would strongly recommend doing this if you want to play ranked and if you want to play uh, competitive player matches because otherwise you're going to be just confused because your moves are going to be different. Yeah, I wish it was set up differently, but it's not. So whatever, no point in worrying over that. Let's get into training mode with a brand new character. Got the first variation. If you are fighting against uh, a new character or learning a new character, I think it's worth picking their mirror so that you also can record your own character's moves and know how learn how to deal with them, just in case you encounter a mirror match every once in a while. So yeah, this is a stage. I've picked this stage because it's kind of calm. It, there's not a lot of things going on visually in the background since there is no like training stage anymore. And yeah, what do you look for? First of all, movement. You always want to explore a character's movement, walk around, dash around, jump a little bit, maybe try the jumping attacks, yeah. Now, I can already begin telling apart some things. First of all, she has decent walk speed. Nothing amazing, I wouldn't say she stands out in terms of her walk speed. I've seen faster characters, but it's also not bad. Her dashes, I think her dashes are great. One thing that's good about her uh, walk back is this initial step. Look at it covers quite a big distance, so that's going to be good. All right, as I said, jump. I can already tell her jump is going to be pretty good. In general, jumping is very bad in this game. However, uh, if you are going to jump, you want a character with a jump like this. If the character does like a somersault, it's really good because the way they jump, they kind of tuck themselves in and it actually shrinks their hurt box, making it way, way easier to jump over projectiles. I think the Shaolins have similar jumps. I think Liu Kang and uh, Kung Lao have similar jumps. I'm not sure about uh, the other characters. I haven't tried all the characters, of course, but yeah, holy shit. Okay, before we go into any of that, yeah, let's look at their short hops as well. Standard overhead. Standard overhead. Yeah, nothing special. This doesn't seem... Well, maybe. No, I, well, it does cover decent range. It also deals decent amount of damage. Whatever. Next thing you want to do is just look at her main buttons. One, two, three, four. All highs. I wouldn't say anything special about them. Next up, try some of the directions. Okay. This back one. You can always see your inputs on the side. Back one, 
This is going to be pretty good, I can already tell. And I'll explain why in a little bit. Okay, forward one, she doesn't have one. Back two. Okay. Okay, that is... That is really good. Alright. Yeah, forward two. I figured this one out already by accident. This seems really good. It's almost like this is her slide. <laughs> Holy shit, it covers a huge chunk. Of course, it's... Yeah, it's a high. Let's check out the frame data on it. If you want to check out the frame data for a move, just go into practice mode. It's zero on block, seriously. That's pretty good. A move that's this quick, that is zero on block, even if it's a high, is going to be pretty useful. Okay, we'll cover the rest of that later. So yeah, now you have a basic understanding of what your character can do. Oh yeah, I haven't looked at her downs. Down one. Okay, that has decent range. Like katanas. Her down two, standard down two, down three. Oh, it's a mid. This is so strange. Several characters I've seen now have mid down threes. It's kind of a weird option. Oh, probably that's why. Okay, this is just straight up predator. This is predators down four. That's really good. Covers a huge distance. Or Borai chose, depending on depending on your pick, you know. Alright, now that we've figured out their basic moves, let's have a look at some of their combo strings. Now, a character might have a ton of combo strings, a character might have not many. What you want to look out for are four things. First of all, the first thing is a quick punisher. Usually, characters down one, not down ones, uh, standing ones are their quickest moves. If we look at standing one, we can see that the startup is seven frames. It's pretty good. I'm not sure if she has anything. She has another seven frame. Oh, but that's one of her jumping attacks. So as you can see, that is by far her fastest move. So, she actually has two combo strings off of that. Okay, that's a knockdown or knock away. Or, and that's a knockdown overhead. So, depending on what type of character she is, if she's more of a zoner, which I don't know yet, you might want to use this. Oh, she does have a projectile. Okay. I just did that. I was just messing around. Yeah, so if she's like really projectile heavy, you want to knock the opponent away. If she's more up close, you want to knock them down and leave them closer. This is an overhead, so that's going to be pretty good. Both of these strings are safe as well. Uh, so that is going to be interesting, especially that this is minus two. Cool. Alright, she has two strings off of, well no, one string off of her back one. If you want to highlight something, you just press triangle and it will be tagged on the screen. Just be careful because if you tag a lot of shit, uh, it's like gonna really clutter up your screen. I prefer at max tagging like two or three things. So yeah. That's really good. The reason it's good because is because the second thing you want to look out for in terms of strings is a good mid attack. Mid attacks pretty much make or break a character. If it covers decent distance and it's a mid, that's going to be really good because your opponent is going to be able to hold that. Going to be forced to hold that, I mean. Uh, they're not going to be able to, you know, down two through it. Yeah, so this is a good move. If this is... Yeah, it's special cancelable. So yeah, already I can tell this is decent. Let's see the frame data on it. Uh, minus two, holy shit, it's safe. So pretty much, if your opponent is blocking, uh, you have no reason not to throw this out. It... wow. No wonder it's minus two. Look at how far it knocks away. All right. Let's look at these 2-2 two, two strings. 2-2-3 two, two, and 2-2-4. Two, two, yeah, this starts off a high, but it's a mix-up. Cool. And this is another knockaway string. So these might be decent in combos. You want to be careful using them in the neutral. Okay, this is actually plus 5. But again, it starts off of a high. And these two are both unsafe. Not super unsafe, but unsafe still. Okay, this is good as well. She has... Combo strings off of her back too. We already figured out that this is a good move. What was it? Okay, let's 
tag this one back to... Oh, this is one of those combo strings you have to dial in. Yeah. But still, this is very good. Look, it's a mid. And look at how much distance it covers. Okay, yeah, this might be a... You have to commit to it. But the fact that you have a mid move that does... That covers this much of the screen is really, really good. Negative 5 as well, so it's safe. This is unsafe. But I think it ends in two overheads. Yeah. So we'll see if she has like a slide or something. That's a low. Next up, uh, let's have a look at this. And might as well tag these two and untag these two. All right. Nice. Another dial in string. But low and overhead. So you can mix up your opponent. Pretty decent. Let's look at if it's special cancelable. It is. Okay. We can already see what might this character be about. And we have this. Okay. It actually launches. Nice. So we've already figured out some of the stuff you might be able to do with her. Okay. See, there you have a combo. So once you begin to l recognize what strings are uh, knock up, <laughs> not knock up, like which strings launch, just knowing your base character's moves, or knowing your character's base moves, I mean, you can begin to string together some combos. Now, these are for sure not going to be optimized, but hey, we are. 10 minutes into this and we've already figured out a 25% combo. All we have to do now is look at the frames on these. So this one is negative, uh, this one is minus 5 and this one is minus 15. We'll have to check out if it actually comes out on block. If you want to test something like that, you go to AI options, block mode, all, and then you can see. It does, okay. But this is, yeah, this is not a string you have to dial in. So, strings in this game fall into two general categories. There's the ones that you have to input early on, that you have to input completely, like this back to string. I have to press the whole input if I want the whole thing. See, the rest of it doesn't come out if I delay it. However, with some strings, you can delay it. So, if I see that my opponent blocks this, I can just finish and be at negative 5. If I see it hits, I can input the final hit later. See, I'm... If you look at my inputs... Okay, I'm doing it too late. But if you look at my inputs, there's a tiny bit of delay there. This term, this fighting game term, is called hit confirming. So hit confirming is seeing if something hits before doing it. Now again, there's a bit of balance here in MK11 because the really powerful strings, they made it so that you cannot hit confirm them. Yeah, like this, you have to input the whole thing, otherwise it doesn't happen. All right, so this is going to be an important string for her. It's a low as well, so that's a bonus. And this one, yeah, probably good for punishing. It knocks away again, but for that, probably her... 1-1 one, one string or 1-3 one, string is more useful. Alright, now that we've looked at all of her strings, let me untag all of this. Did I get them all? Yes, I did. Let's go into special moves. So I'm in variation 1 now. Let's see. Cryogenic Crown. Oh! She's Cyber Sub-Zero. I mean, I kind of had a feeling as soon as I saw this that she's going to be... Uh, I think Cyber Sub-Zero also has this. That she's gonna be, whoa, basically Cyber Sub Zero. So, this is a projectile one. Yeah, kind of more like a bomb not, rather than a projectile. It can be aimed. Yeah, you can combo off of it. It's a mid. Uh, this is something I've noticed with other characters as well. They no longer want you to have the opportunity to do, like, uh, not block infinites, but what are they called? Hard to blockables. I forgot the term. Essentially, if we were playing MKX and Cyber Sub-Zero, this attack would be a low. 
So what you could do is launch that and then at the same time do a jump in and then basically it would pretty much be impossible to block. It also looks like you cannot... Yeah, it looks like you cannot combo into it. Huh, let's see. Wait, hold on. No, you cannot. Fuck. Huh. That's really strange. I wonder if it's because I knock her into the air. Okay. I think it might be, but that didn't combo. Hmm. That knocks her out of range. Hold on. It does combo. However, if the character is even a little bit off of the ground... Ah, it does hit sometimes. Okay, that might be worth investigating. It's not the most consistent thing in the world. Um, hmm. I'm just thinking of the most practical. Holy shit, that goes far. She just yeets her own head. <laughs> and like, it has like some physics to it as well. It rolls. Okay, this is an interesting move, I will say. <laughs> I will say. Uh, usually, you can kind of determine whether moves are good or not. Uh, this one seems... Strange, I will say. Strange will be the word I use. That's the polite word. Next up we have Blade Spin. Yeah. Done this by accident. I think it's in our trailer as well. Huh, okay. So decent damage. Again, combo opportunity if you want. Doesn't do the most damage, but this is minus four on block, so it's actually safe. That is actually very, very good. One thing you want to test out, I'm always concerned with these moves in NRS games. Uh, oops. Okay, good, 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 good. If you've played Injustice 2, you know why I did that. Uh, Injustice 2 initially had a wonderful character named Aquaman, who had a similar move to this with his trident. He would literally do that much damage, what I just did there, in chip, if your opponent was blocking. It was absolutely ridiculous, but it looks like they had the sense to tone that down. Alright, next up is Cryo Stance. Okay, that's her little projectile, and you can amplify it. High projectile, can be blocked of course, I mean ducked, but this one is mid, mid the follow-up, I can't even talk anymore. Looks like it misses sometimes, but it doesn't miss off of this. A decent. The best thing about this probably is look how far away it pushes your opponent and then you can like set your head rolling. I don't I don't see what the use of the very far version would be. Even the far version knocks so far away. Weird, weird. Okay, so we have a basic projectile. Cyber head. Anti air. I mean it hits, but Let's see. Yeah, okay, okay, but let's try something else. See, that does more damage, because there is no amplified version of this, but... If we go to AI options, if you want your opponent to do something, uh, like stand, duck, hop, jump, you can set it here. Let's set her to jump forward. Yeah, it's an anti-air. Doesn't look like... Well, actually. And it's decently fast. I will give them that. So... Is it better than her down two, though? Does less damage, but... I don't know. Might be worth looking at. Anytime you want to test out something like that, you can... Again, set your movement mode. For example, like that. Probably the disadvantage of this move is that it takes super long to recover. You know, see, like, she has to hit the ground before you can do anything else. Interesting. Let's finish looking at her special moves. She has Arctic Barrage, that's the last one. Oh, holy shit. It's an overhead, too. Doesn't pop up. But, what was that string? Yes. 
course, there's no mix-up here because this ends in an overhead anyways. That I forgot how to do. Uh, yeah, maybe I should leave some shit tagged. Oh, okay. Yeah, so technically there is no mix-up here because it ends in an overhead anyways. But if you hit your opponent... This does quite a good chunk of damage. Interesting. It doesn't look like she's the highest damaging character in the game in terms of combos. She doesn't have a classic Ice Ball like Sub-Zero. So yeah, that was variation number one. Let's move on to variation number two. Future Legend. Interesting. Alright, let's look at what she has. Doesn't look like she has a new combo string. Doesn't look like she has new normals. So it must be special moves. Glacial Calving. Okay. What the hell? Okay, amplify with R1. Oh, okay. Weird timing to it. Huh. Let's have a look at what this is. Uh, when you have a move like this, this might be something to do with projectiles. Go to record. And since we are playing a mirror match, we are using Frost, so we already know her moves. Yeah, might be worth taking a step backwards. Okay. Shit. <laughs> yeah, I screwed up. Oh, it's down, down, yeah. Interesting. And the... But like, what's the difference? Aside from the speed it moves. Huh. Does it come out quicker? Man, that's a weird timing. Hmm. Interesting. So it's a projectile shield, but it only absorbs one. I mean, is there anything that's different between... Both say projectile invulnerable. Maybe it just comes out quicker. No, it doesn't even. Huh, interesting. Oh, she has... Yeah, because we got rid of her head bomb, which is weird to say. Okay, she has another projectile. Knocks down, also high. It looks decent, looks decent, I'll give it up. Also doesn't have an amplified version, so no combos off of it. She also has, now we've seen Karaya's stance, that's her projectile. Cyberhead we've seen, and Ogre Lunge. Not Ogre Lunge, but Ogre Lunge. Okay. This is interesting. Holy shit. Okay, this is probably her highest damage combo I've done so far. But man does this have great combo. Not combo, corner carry. Just gotta not screw up. Yeah, it looks like she's really gonna be like Cyber Sub-Zero, that she'll live and die in the corner. Uh, and we have Microburst. Uh-huh, it's a mid. We finally have a combo starter. So, let's... Let's have a look at this. That's gonna be a problem. They're too far away. But on the ground, yeah. So something that might be worth investigating. Hmm, we'll see if it combos. Because this might be, this might be the variation that does the damage. The other variation might be, the other variation might be set up. This one might be damage. Damn. It's okay to screw up combos. It's only natural. We have 
32 actually. All right, two meters, but I think most characters, if they want to have high damage, need to use two meters. So yeah, that is actually a decent combo because you can do something like this. So you can already tell, and that's full corner carry as well. You can already see that just by having a basic understanding of a character's moves, we can start to figure out some combos, just knowing your strings and uh, stringing them together, literally. And again, this might not be optimal. Again, there might be higher damaging variations of this, but that's okay. As you pick up the character, you will learn more and more. One thing we have to check out. Hopefully she doesn't have red blood, because if she does, demonetization, here we come. Interesting. Shit, she has red blood. God damn it, YouTube cops, they're gonna be coming after me. Damn it, how? Like, she's a cyborg. She shouldn't have... Okay. Let's ignore that for a second, because uh, I just got demonetized, but it's okay. Her thingy side switches, her fatal blow, and it also is a full screen projectile, which is interesting. Starts up decently fast. So now that we spent around 25 minutes in the lab with the character, we already have an understanding of what she's about. So it looks like she's gonna be corner focused. She has decent frames, and this variation we're in currently is definitely the damage variation, the combo one. The other one is setup oriented. It really is gonna come down to how useful that uh, head projectile in the other variation, how good it is in the corner, but that's kind of more advanced setup stuff. All right, just a few more tips on practice mode, things to look out for. You can set your opponent to block. Uh, auto block is, I don't know how useful it is anymore, but it used to be, yeah. It used to be good for figuring out like gaps in strings and all that. Stance, they will only block standing or if they're ducking, they'll only block ducking. And of course you have block all where they'll block everything. Random attack, random combo, I would stay away from. Uh, you have block type flawless, so you can also see where the flawless block gaps are in your strings. Movement mode we went over. Reversal mode, uh, this is to check out reversal attacks. Now see, this is a little bit flawed. This has always been flawed. It kind of depends on the AI, but if we go for a not shitty reversal option, see, she's stupid. She's trying to, there must be some tiny gap in the string and she's trying to reversal through it. But yeah, you can see that this string is unsafe. Because I'm doing it, I'm holding block, and she's getting the, rever the reversal. Now, the weakness of this is that it is impossible to set a combo. Uh, however, for, like, what you call it, special moves, it's good. And just in general to feel and kind of figure out what's unsafe. We also have delay get up and get up mode. If you turn on get up mode and you go for, I don't know, ice spike. If you knock her down, she's gonna yeah she's gonna wake up. So you can learn how to counter characters wake up wake ups like that. Practice mode, I mean practice options. You can go to the corner, reset distance if you want to be full screen. You can switch positions, do all that. You know, take off your life so you can do fatal blows. This is all useful stuff. You want to have damage info, button logs, and all that on. You can also turn frame data on. However, this one might be a little bit confusing because it puts up the hit advantage and the cancel advantage and all that as well. Whereas if you know that if you go into the menu screen and you, you just basically have to look at startup and block advantage, you'll be good to go. So overall, hope you guys enjoyed this video and now you have a basic understanding of uh, what I do to learn a character. I'm liking this character, she's fun, she's fun. It'll really depend on how viable she is in the meta. She seems very setup heavy, 
but interesting character, good corner carry, yeah, we'll see, I think, again, she's gonna live or die in the corner, this move, I, my, I might play her just because of this move, so thanks for watching guys, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like, subscribe, do all that good stuff, there are a ton more MK videos coming in the future, and for now, I'm gonna wrap it up here, thanks for watching, and peace out guys, goodbye.